jilek khola kahe premananda e mona goranga ridoya dariya bola baj goranga kaha goranga laha gorange rana re che jana goranga baje se hoy amar pran re Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeshaiva Padambu Jabakti Labya, Prema Bidana Padama Pumarta, Tis my jagan mongala mongalaya, Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste, Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste, Chaitanya chandraya namo namaste, Madgavirapi gopala, Sri Kriyat kripaya jari. Tadaiva sambhaya pitva rishya yusta priya janaha. Shri Krishna Krishna Chaitanya. Sasanatana rupaka. Gopala ragunathapta brajabala bapahimam. Vansha kalpata rubhyascha. Kripa sindhu bhyayavacha. Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So we'll offer a prayer to Shilanatam Das Thakur. Shri Krishna Nama Amrita Bhai Shri Vaktra Chandra Prabhadvasta Tamo Bharaya Goranga Deva Anucharaya Namo Nama Srila Nara Tomaya Again and again I offer my obeisances unto Shilanatam Das Thakur. He is indeed a true follower of Lord Garunga Dev, the nectarian shower of the holy name of Krishna, radiating from the moon of his mouth, destroys the darkness of ignorance. So sometimes it's said that to make one step forward, you have to take two steps backwards. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, following that logic, we're going to uh, go back a little bit and kind of look a little more closely about the general principle that we've been speaking about principles. Let's go ahead and look at the verse again today. This is Prem Bhakti Chandrika, the fifth song, which is Raghunuga Britti, a, a, a glimpse of Raghunuga Bhakti. It's the eighth stanza. Yuga lachurana sevi nirantara ehi bhave anurage taki basudoya Sadane bhavi bhajaha siddhadehe pabhataha draga patira e se upai. So the translation I will constantly desire to serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna with loving attachment. Whatever I contemplate during the practice of devotional service will certainly be achieved upon perfection in the spiritual body. This is the method on the path of attachment. So this is our third session where we're speaking about Siddha Pranali. And I want to give a little further definition of that today. Uh, maybe I was a little too quick in some of our previous sessions about that. And I explained further why we're speaking so much about this topic. First of all, this subject is not written about directly by Rupa Goswami or any of our previous Acharyas, any of the Goswamis. There are a few mentions of it here and there, which we're going to look at today. And one of them is here in this verse today. 
Siddhadehi Pabataha, speaking about when I achieve that Siddhadeha, which is Sadhane Bhagibhajaha, which is um, wh whatever I'm meditating on, whatever my mood is, whatever I'm feeling, contemplating during my Sadhana, that's what I'll achieve when I get perfection. Raga Patara E Se Upai. He says, this is the Upai, this is the, the Krama, this is a sequence of the, of the process, a path of Raga Nuga Bhajan. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, first of all, again, I want to say that I, I, I was doing a little more research on this thing recently, reading some more things, and I find there's a lot of very contentious writings about this, people very angry and critical of each other, throwing rocks at each other. And it's really a ridiculous thing because there's different bona fide Vaishnavas who practice both things. Both things meaning, as we've spoken in one of in some of our previous sessions, Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains in uh, Jaiva Dharma how there are two paths, the Antaranga Tata and the Bahiranga Tata. Bahiranga Tata means the external path, which he says is a path which was given by Srila Jan Chandra Goswami in his Gorgavinda Smaran Archana Paditi, and the Antaranga Pata, the internal path, which is given by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. So I want to look back a little bit in our previous session, just very quickly, just to remind everybody of things, because we want to try to keep things connected together. In our previous session, we quoted this verse, quoted many verses, uh, one from Chaitanya Bhagavat, speaking about the mood of Haridas Thakur, he says, Kanda Kanda Hoi Deha Jaya Jari Pran, that, that you, even you cut my body to pieces, uh, every piece of my body will go on chanting the holy name. And we cited so many different pramanas from Shastra that Nam Bhajan is a path in this age and that Nam Bhajan gives everything. In fact, Sanatana Goswami he says, Jayati Jayati Nama Nanda Rupa Mararya, all glories to that name of Krishna, which gives all bliss, the form of the name, which is Marari Krishna himself. Viramita Nija Dharma Dhyana Pujati Yatnam. That name makes me give up my Nija Dharma, my Vanashram Dharma. It makes me give up Jan, meditation. It makes me give up all types of puja because the holy name gives everything. And we quoted so many verses from that, uh, one of which, one of my favorite verses from the Adi Purana, which Bhaktivinoda Thakur also quotes in uh, Jaiva Dharma and, and is also quoted in Hadi Bhakti Vilas, that uh, namaiva sadrisam gyanam, that there's no gyan equal to the holy name. And it goes on saying something, and he says, namaiva padama muktir. There's no mukti which is equal to the holy name. The holy name is the topmost liberation. Namaiva Padama Gati. The holy name is the highest goal. So this is what our acharyas are, are commenting on repeatedly. Again, Skanda Purana, Krishna Kun marked this verse, uh, is uh, quoted several times by Acharya's Mahabhagavata Nityam Kolo Sankirta Keshavam, that the hallmark or the symptom of, of a Mahabhagava in the age of Kali, Nityam Kolo, always in the age of Kali, is that he's always chanting the holy name. That's the, the symptom of a Mahabhagava. It doesn't say anything about uh, Siddha Pranali. And we read something from the 12th chapter of the the tenth can the Bhagavatam, twelfth canto, Atma Bhavam Yanga, that when someone uh, chants the holy name when they're about to die, Krishna reveals to them Atma Bhavam, their own true Bhav, their own true identity. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and other acharyas have commented on that. I had some exchange with Lila Purushottam about that. He was asking some commentaries. But he says that, that if someone is dying and they, they think of the Lord, they think of the Lord's name, then he'll give them prema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and he comments, how does he know that they're meditating on him? Because he's a soul of all souls. <laughs> he knows everything. And we spoke in our last session how the holy name is mantra. It's the topmost mantra. We were just reading from Adi Purana. Huh? 
that of all the different mantras, the holy name is the best mantra. And this is also described in the Brahma Purana, Om Karadi Samayutam Namaskaranta Depitam, that the mantra is, what is a mantra? It's something which is preceded by a sacred syllable like Om or others. And by the way, it's a very interesting discussion. I was just reading recently about uh, a Gayatri, Brahma Gayatri Mantra in ISKCON. There's some controversy. We don't have to take the side in controversies. We can be dispassionate observers and respect still both sides. But uh, some persons, Hari Chandra Prabhu knows very well, some persons, they are saying that, that ladies should not get the Brahma Gayatri Mantra or someone is not doing Brahminical work or doesn't have a Brahminical nature, they shouldn't get the Brahma Gayatri Mantra. And there's so many complicated things to be said about it. But <laughs> final conclusion is that according to Brahma Purana, uh, sudras can't, Shastra says, sudras can't chant mantra. So if someone's a sudra, they can't chant. And, and it says also there's different verses where saying that ladies also can't chant mantra. Of course, again, Srila Prabhupada gave Brahma Gayatri to everyone. But some people say, well, that was just an extraordinary circumstance because those ladies were upset and they insisted, so Prabhupada gave it to them. Okay, if you take that stance then, and you take the, the hardcore version of Shastra, as is given here in the Brahma Purana, Om Karadi Samayutam Namaskaranta Diptitam Tanama Sarvatatva Mantra Ityabhidhiti. Mantra Ityabhidhiti. This is what a mantra is. Mantra is preceded by the sacred syllable Om. So if you insist that that only someone who's born in a Brahma in a, in a has a Brahminical nature or someone who has a male gender can chant mantra, then that means that we can't chant Nama Om Vishnu Padaya because it has it, it's a mantra, it has Om in it. That means devotees can't chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya unless they're a man or unless they have a brahminical nature, if you want to really follow the principle. So a mantra is something which has Omkar or some other bij mantra in it, uh, seed mantra, and which uh, has illuminated by the, some obeisances at the end, and it uh, has a name of the Lord. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he commented that what we've gotten from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our Guru is not an ordinary mantra, but it's a maha mantra. And he says ordinary mantras are in dative case, and they have words like namaha, swaha, swada, etc. But the maha mantra is an evocative case. So the holy name of the Lord is a maha mantra. And that's what's described in many different places. Jiva Goswami, we gave example from uh, his commentary on, on the Jamil, and how mantra sabina namokti, that mantra here refers to the holy name. And then we read so many different uh, things because I wanted to stress that this is what, what are our acharyas giving? The, what are our acharyas, what is Shastra giving? And we heard from the Bhagavatam on left canto, we heard from Kali Santara Upanishad, Ananta Sanghita, Sanat Kumar Sanghita, Agni Purana, and so many different places where the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is given throughout Shasha, the Brahma Yamala, the Radharidvaya, the Brahmanda Purana, so many, many different places, the Padma Purana, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is given. Uh, this is a process for this age, again and again and again, that's, that's given. Now, looking back, what I was just starting to say in the beginning of this session, how the term Siddha Pranali, that phrase, is not found in any of the writings of Srila Rupa Goswami or any of the principal Gaudiya Goswamis. So in reply to that, some of our friends, and they are friends, who uh, have that particular bhajan pranali or that system of bhajan, uh, which siddha pranali, pranali means a river or a flow of water, and siddha means perfection, siddha pranali, refers to that meditation that someone does where they meditate on their swarup and then the swarup of their guru and the swarup of their param guru, the swarup of their par paro guru, etc. And that, that's called siddha pranali. But that term and that 
actually take the principles not found anywhere. But some of our friends, if you say that to them, they'll say, well, maybe the term is not found, but the process is. And there's a famous verse which, which uh, our Lila Purusha Temple is very familiar with. Seva sadaka rupena siddhad rupena chatrahi tabhava lipsuna karya vraja lokana sarataha. Uh, this is from Bhakti Resumita Sindhu. It's quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That someone who's inclined toward uh, spontaneous devotion, who that they should meditate on on a particular sadaka rupena, they have they, they should meditate on a particular associate of the Lord, and they should uh, save a sadaka rupena in their sadaka rup that they, they should do this meditation, thinking about their own siddha rup. So that's probably the best pramana that they've got. I, I can show you the verse here on the screen with Srila Prabhupada's translation. Again, this is quoted in Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhi Lila, chapter 22. Prabhupada translates that the advanced devotee who is inclined to spontaneous loving service should follow the activities of a particular associate of Krishna's in Vrindavan. He should execute service externally as a regulative devotee as well as internally from his self-realized position. Thus he should perform devotional service both externally and internally. So really for our friends at Radhakun uh, and other places who practice Siddha Pranali, this is probably their Mahavakya, their most important pramana that they have. But it's significant that the, the phrase Siddha Pranali doesn't appear the phrase ekadas bhav doesn't appear. Ekadas bhav meaning something we'll get into a little bit later, but it means these uh, 11 different uh, things that, that such a person meditates on. The verse does say that someone who's advanced, as Prabhupada translates, uh, is inclined to raganuga bhakti, they should follow a particular associate and they should do service in two ways, both externally and internally. So their point is that this internal absorption refers to a Siddha Pranali. Okay, I, we're not here to try to defeat anyone. And please, I, I don't, I would be very distressed if devotees heard these classes and then they went out and tried to use them as a, as a stick or a rock to hit people with and say, you guys are bogus and we're the only bona fide ones because uh, there's different types of bhajan. So uh, they also quote the two verses prior to this one, Majjhila chapter 22, text 156 and 157. This is Srila Prabhupada's translation. Bhaya antara iha duita sadhana. That there's two types of sadhana. There's the external and there's the internal. Bhaya sadhika dehi kore shravana kirtan. And the bhaya or the external sadhana Someone in their sadhak deha, their uh, external physical body of, of a sadhak, they're doing shravan and kirtan. But mani nija siddha deha, koriya bhavana, in their internal uh, meditation, they're thinking about their, their eternal position in the spiritual world, ratri dini kori braji krishna to savan, and how they're serving Krishna in a certain way, day and night, in braj. So these are really some of the very best pramanas. These are the best pramanas that I've seen for this particular uh, practice. Again, there's um, what Siddha Pranali means. I, I feel a little bad that we didn't actually define this better. Um, I want to look at the, the only discussion that I know of that I've heard from any of my friends there, Radha Kun and things, is from Srila Jan Chandra Goswami's Gorgavindarchan Smarana Padati. And he gives 11 different uh, aspects, or Ekadas Bhav. And it's Ekadas Bhav in the tradition there at Radha Kun and amongst some of the uh, Babaji's, they, at the time of initiation, the time of initiation into Ekadas Bhav, they give these 11 different features which come from Jan Chandra Goswami's Padati. So I just want to touch on these 11 things real quick, just so we understand about it, because 
I, I really don't like it. I, I, I saw someone writing something uh, in rebuttal to the same article that I was reading about to Brahma Gayatri Mantra. And the person who wrote the rebuttal starts off basically by calling them names. The other, and then these people, they're just a bunch of feminists and this and that. And some of them are very strict sannyasis <laughs> in, in that group. And just for me, when I read something like that, it just immediately turns me off. That's just not, not the way to do things. Or so you, you can tell she's a professor in a university. If you present a subject and you say, this is what's good, and anybody who disagrees with this is wrong, uh, that's not <laughs> a very scholarly presentation. You should look at both sides of the picture, and we should understand. And that's why in this session today, I'm backing up a little bit. I'm hoping we can continue where I left off in that direction. But I want to look a little more carefully of what they say and, and to show that, that it's not just some uh, speculation, but there there is a solid uh, system for this. But... It's not our system. So there's 11 different, I'm just bolding as I go along, there's 11 different symptoms, 11 different aspects of this Ekadas Bhav, which are given by Guru at the time of initiation. The first is what is a Sambandha, and that means a specific relationship with Radharani in Braj. The bias, how old you are. The Nam, what is your name, your Manjari name? What is your Rup, your particular appearance? And usually that, that especially is described in terms of the color of your body. Yuta Prabesh, what uh, yuta, do, what group do you belong to and how are you entering into that particular group? Who is the, who is the yutashri, who is the leader of that group? It's very important. The Besh, what uh, type of dress do you wear? Uh, and usually, in specific, usually in particular, they'll mention some particular color of it. Or like Rupa Manjari, she has a, a sari, or doesn't say sari actually, but she has a dress of some kind which has uh, peacock, uh, peacock feathers on it. So what is the agya? Agya means in my particular instruction, the basasthana is a place of residence such as we're mentioning here, Bhaktivinoda Sunanda Sukhada Kunj, what is the save of the specific service that, that someone does, such as fanning the divine couple or offering them carpur, camphor, etc. And then uh, para kastasava, excuse me, para kastasava, rasa. <laughs> what is our highest aspiration that we want? And here are examples being given that someone's being asked something personally by Srimati uh, Rupa Manjari, and Palyadasi Bhav, the mood of being completely dependent maidservant under the tutelage of a particular uh, Manjari. So again, this comes from the Gorgavinda Smarana Archana Padati, text 92 through 104. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people, just by the way, on, on this description we just read, they ask, what is the difference between agya and seva? Agya means the order, and seva means the service. Seva is a specific type of service that we want to do, like fanning or decorating with jewelry or dressing. Agya means a particular order. And in the line of, of Janava Manta, which is our line, coming from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, various gurus, they follow different particular sakis, most of them are in the Lita Sakis group, and some serve under Vishaka, Tanga Vidya, etc. And the Agya generally means where, where am I getting my instruction from? Where am I getting my order? And who is my group leader? And so that that uh, goes back. It's like like saying who is your president. And if you if you're in the military in the United States, or if you visit a, a post office in the United States, I don't know if it's like this in Hungary, but there's a, a picture in every post office in the United States of the president of the United States, the current president. That's their policy. And, and that post office is considered to be representing that particular person. So the phrase agya, which is the seventh of this uh, Ekadas Bab principles, 
Agya means who is my particular group leader. And so I'm putting the photograph of Lolita Saki <laughs> on the wall instead of uh, President uh, Biden or whatever. <laughs> uh, so these are the different uh, 11 different symptoms that could ask Bob. They, again, they come from, from Jan Chandra Goswami's Padati. Uh, I, we can just show you a little bit of the Sanskrit here, but but we just read through these different things. Radha Krishna Mantra Kahi Kode Yugi Dadi Kama Bija Sunilili Anguli Anusari. These, he gives this, um, he gives this, uh, excuse me, he gives this, uh, I was reading the wrong place. He gives this Ekadas Bhav in the Gorgamini Smarna Chinapadati. Here it is. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. Ashaiva Siddha Dehasha, Sadhananani Yata Kraman, Ekadasha Prasidani Lakshante. That's a typo. Oops. Lakshante Tim Manoharam. Mm -hmm. So these 11 different things are very attractive for Siddha Deha. Nam, Rup, Vaya, Vesh, Sambanda, Yudha, Evit. These Agya, Seva. These, these eleven different things they're given by Jan Chandra Goswami in his Gorgavinda Swarna Archana Padati. Now Bhaktivinoda Thakur had these things from Bipin Bihari Goswami to get into another uh, conflict which which I, I don't think is really necessary. Uh, some people they want to try to criticize, some people want to try to hold up and use Bipin Bihari Goswami against the followers of Bhakti Siddhanta. And then other people want to criticize Bipin Bihari Goswami. I don't see any reason to do that. Uh, I'm in the line of Srila Prabhupada, I follow that. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in a number of places in his writings, one very striking one is in his uh, autobiography. He says that I was praying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to send me Guru. And then Mahaprabhu sent me Bipin Bihari Goswami. And nowhere in his writings does, does Bhaktivinoda Thakur say anything negative about Bipin Bihari Goswami. I've not found anything directly written, written in writing from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Although there's one article one of my friends found and, and showed me in Bengali where the Gaudiya Mutt is saying some negative things about Bipin Bihari Goswami. Okay, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta didn't put his name on that thing. And it's not something that, that I feel comfortable going to do. What is a necessity? Bhaktivinoda Thakur appreciated him. He got initiation from him. That's, I can respect that. It's not a problem at all. So Bhipin Bihari Goswami gave Bhaktivinoda Thakur Siddha Pranali. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks about that. And he, and he speaks about his Siddha Swarup also in some of his writings. There's other examples of, about uh, someone giving Manjari Swarup or Siddha Deha in uh, different literatures, but, but these are all later literatures. These are not the root literatures of the six Goswamis. Uh, one example is, which I prematurely went to, is in Prema Balas of Nichananda Das, where Gopal Bhatta Goswami gives this to Srinivasa Charya. And he says, Radha Krishna Mantra Kahi Kare Yuge Dhari Kama Bija Sunaili Anguli Anusari. He speaks about how he gave Radha Krishna Mantra, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, gave uh, Radha Krishna Mantra to Srinivasa Charya. And then he explained the counting of the Kama Beach with his fingers exactly the same way Srila Prabhupada did and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta with devotees when they gave them Gayatri Mantra. The first thing they teach them how to count on their fingers. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, Gopal, Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami did. He took Srinivasacharya's hand uh, and he showed him how to count. Uh, Kama Beach Sunaili Anguli. Anguli means on his fingers showed him how to count on his fingers. Uh -huh. And then he told him that you should meditate on these mantras. You should contemplate and take shelter of them. And then he told him, Guna manjarika sharai, mani manjarika tumi, tomara yutera vivarna kahi sabha ami. He said that, that uh, you 
are money manjari. And you're taking shelter of guna manjari. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, and he speaks to them about this, about this ekadas bhava, rupa guna, rati, rasa, the different personalities, and uh, what you're particularly doing. And he speaks to him about uh, his siddha, his siddha form, and how that will come. So that's uh, an example that they give. Um, I, just between us, <laughs> I'm not so convinced by that. I don't think, I don't so far, I don't think we've looked at all their best evidences so far, and I'm not saying that they're wrong, but if someone wants to claim superiority or exclusivity in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, that only persons who do this are bona fide, which is what some of the neophyte members of those sanghas do sometimes, it's a rather slim peg to try to hang your 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 prejudice on because it's not really clear we, if we look at the verses from uh from uh Chaitanya Charitamrita and from uh Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu uh it says that you should meditate on those things it doesn't say that that you're given these things by your guru and that's the question we don't we don't disagree that we should meditate on these things. Srila Prabhupada, as we spoke in our last couple of sessions, he said we should think of these things. Very advanced devotees should think of these things. But it's not, the question is, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's question, Bhakti Vinatakra's question is, who has the qualification to get these things? Who has the qualification to give these things? And Bhakti Vinod's conclusion is that the holy name gives everything. So that's from our, 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 our root literatures of our six Goswamis. A later literature is this, this uh, Jan Chandra Goswami's Padati, and he's very clear about it. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains to us, interestingly, interesting to me, because Bhaktivinoda Thakur has Siddha Pranali, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that this is a Bahiranga Pata, or the external path, and the internal path is a path of Raghunath Das Goswami. And this is the path that both he and his illustrious son, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, stressed to, for people in Kali Yuga. Now again, there's a story we just read from Prema Vilas and how Gopal Bhatta Goswami gave initiation to Srinivas Acharya. But again, it, it says that he revealed to him his Swarup and, it, and he should meditate on different things. But uh, it's not so convincing. This is This is the, one of the best evidences they have, uh, if the guru is 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 um, pleased with the disciple, the guru may reveal that thing. But to say that it's something that all disciples have to have, uh, that's not stated there. Now, one other uh, pramana that they give is from Srila uh, Jiva Goswami's Bhakti Sandarbha from Anucheta 312. Let's look at that. Put it on the screen. Kechid asta dasakshara dhyanam ko dohana samoya vongsivadya samakrishta tat tat sarva mayat vena bhavat yeta. Bhavayanti, excuse me. Some persons, while they're remembering the 18 syllable mantra, the Kama Beach mantra, they meditate on some pastimes of taking, tending the cows and playing the flute. Uh, and they get absorbed in those things. And he says there that uh, for myself to obtain my desires perfection, I should meditate on that very form of a resonant of brudge that my guru has instructed me in. Okay, so these are things that we all agree on. This, these are the best pramanas from our friends who want to stress Siddha Pranali, but we don't disagree with any of these things. What we might disagree with is just how they come to us. And uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur were not happy with people who gave this in a rather cheap way. And I'd like to read you two things from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. One is from his book, Brahman and Vaishnava. And this was a book that he compiled to show that Vaishnavas are better than Brahmins. And he was also very conscious that at the time, probably most of the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas at, at the time were uh, 
uh, practicing this city of Manali. Hmm? So let's let's read some of that. And then I'd like to read you a letter that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta wrote to one of his lady disciples. And then uh, something from a short thing from a lecture, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. It's kind of similar to some of the things that we, we spoke in, in some of our last sessions, but they're a little different. And I'd like to just go over it again. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says in his Brahmana Vaishnava book, those who have attained perfection in their bhajan have realized their own constitutional position. But nowadays in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, some immature Pancharatrika mantra traders <laughs> are presenting imaginary material names and forms as a goal of life and the path of perfection, Siddha Pranali. In this way, they gratify the minds of their disciples as well as disclose their own foolishness and ignorance of the Vaishnava literatures. We are not talking about these persons. The realizations of those who came to know their constitutional position by the strength of their authentic worship of Hari, Hari Bhajan, were often written down by their disciples in various parts of India at various times. So I decided, and we, we had a little kind of discussion briefly, I think in our last session, session before, that I would prefer not to give examples of personalities in our line, in our line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, who apparently... And I use the word apparently strongly because that's all that we can say. It's apparent, according to my perception, who apparently achieved perfection and understood their Siddha Swarup. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lula Purushottam Prabhu. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta here, he does comment like this. So he says that, there, there were such persons, and they have been written down by their disciples in various parts of India at various times. However, he doesn't give examples. And I am extremely shy about speaking about these things, probably a lot because of my own particular religious background. I was raised up in a fundamental, fanatical, born-again church, Christian church in America. And I, I, my grandmother would tell me things like, you know, she said, and I went to, to to buy groceries, and I took the groceries out to the car, and I was going to put them in the trunk and the boot, and I tried, and, and I couldn't open the door of the car, and I kept trying, and it wouldn't open, and then suddenly, I God spoke to me, and God said, try the trunk key, Beulah, Beulah was her name, and she said, but I told her, God, the trunk key, won't, and God said, try the trunk key, and I tried the trunk key, and it was a miracle, and the trunk key worked. So God has nothing better to do than to tell some crazy old lady that she should, you know, she's using the wrong key on her key ring. Those kind of things are are food for persons who have lokik shraddha, who have weak common faith, and they get really excited when there's when there's a dream, when there's some miracle, and somebody produces something, and some magical thing happens. We hear some story about someone who's realized their sarup. There are stories like that. I have a god sister who my grandma said she realized her sarup. But what is the value of me speaking about that when I haven't realized that? And I can't share that realization. Even if I had it, I can't share that realization with you. It just becomes something fanatical. Mm -hmm. So the, the real question, as Lila Purushottam was just pointing out, is, is coming down to this point here. How do we get, how do we understand this thing? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta is saying that we don't disagree. We don't disagree that, that we should know our sarup, that, that this is our goal. But how do we come to understand that? And he's <laughs> a little harsh, a little strong. He's saying nowadays in our Gaudiya line, some immature pancharatrika mantra traders <laughs> are presenting imaginary material names and forms as a goal of life and the path of perfection. So I, that's a really strong comment. He's saying they're immature because many times they haven't realized their sarup, and probably a strong evidence they haven't is that, that sometimes they still have girlfriends or whatever, that they're not following regulated principles nicely. Uh, and they're they're pancharatrika mantra traders. <laughs> they're just doing some trading, some business. Uh, 
and these kind of mantras, and they're presenting what? They're presenting imaginary material names and forms as a goal of life. Huh? So this is what we spoke about in our previous sessions also, kalpana. That if it hasn't, if it if it isn't something that's realized by you, if it's something that you're perceiving through your punch again indriya, your five knowledge acquiring senses, and it's only pancha tan matra, or five, uh, five material elements, or as Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta says in one article, when we try to use the the senses, which are the same things which bind us. We use the same senses which are binding us up to try to understand something transcendental. We're going to definitely be a failure from the very beginning. So what then is our process? And, and I want to uh, try to speak a little something about that today. Let's look at this letter from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. It's such a sweet letter. Uh, this is from his uh, book of letters, and they took all the names out. So uh, in the Bengali, they took him out. So we don't know who this was written to, but uh, clearly it was written to one of his lady disciples. And he says, best of virtuous women. <laughs> That's how he addressed her. I became aware of the news through your letter dated 28 that you went to Vrindavan. And from the Vaishnavas there, you heard about meditating on the Astakali Alila, the eight divine eightfold daily pastimes, of the Lordship Radha Krishna. While there can be no doubt about the fact that this topic is highly venerated, those who conceive of this subject matter, while their consciousness is riddled with the nartas, do not conceive what it truly is. It's a similar principle. Now we're not talking exactly about Siddha Deha, but we're talking about meditation, which is an important aspect of that process. And he's saying that, that as long as someone has a nartas, they can't conceive truly that subject matter. The subject matter is a bona fide subject, but they can't. Prabhupada in, um, hmm, I wonder if I can find this real quick. I just was reading in Krishna book today. Hmm. Let's see here. I think it should be pretty easy to bring up. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada spoke about this. This is from chapter 46 of Krishna book. Since Krishna had departed from Vrindavan and gone to Mutter, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, especially Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, Srimati Radharani, the gopis, and the cowherd boys were simply thinking of Krishna at every step. They were thinking, here Krishna was playing in this way. Here Krishna was blowing his flute. Krishna was joking with us in this way. And Krishna was embracing us like this. This is called Leela Smarna. And it is a process of association with Krishna most recommended by great devotees. Even Lord Chaitanya, when he was at Puri, enjoyed Leela Smarna, association with Krishna. Those in the most exalted position of devotional service and ecstasy, and mark that how his comment, the most exalted position of devotional service and ecstasy, can live with Krishna always by remembering his pastimes. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has given us a transcendental literary work entitled Krishna Bhavanamrita, which is full of Krishna's pastimes. Exalted devotees can remain absorbed in Krishna thought by reading such books. Any book of Krishna Leela, even this book, Krishna, or our teachings of Lord Chaitanya is actually solace for devotees feeling separation from Krishna. It's not that, that we say these things are not bona fide, huh? that Leela Smarna is not bona fide. There are some, unfortunately, some neophyte devotees in our line who try to argue like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vikram Keshavu comments, as a practitioner progresses towards spiritual perfection, all these things are revealed naturally within the heart that sincerely seeks service. Mm -hmm. And that's our point. How do we achieve these things? So let's go back to this letter Srila Bhakti Siddhanta wrote to the best of virtuous women. <laughs> and he goes on to explain, uh, first of all, he's saying in the previous paragraph, those who conceive this subject matter while their consciousness is riddled with the nartas do not conceive what it truly is. All those, those esoteric truths that are revealed solely through one's advancing practice of chanting the holy names are to be considered the introduction to one's sarup. 
one's true spiritual identity. When one becomes free from anartas or the unwanted desires of the heart, one's sarup manifests. When one's sarup awakens, one's perception is automatically admitted into eternal subject matters. This is not something that can be deceitfully taught to or determined for someone else. In contrast, the revelations one has while submerged in chanting the holy names with a sincere heart should be humbly presented to sadhu and guru so that one's conception may be refined and approved. This is a genuine process for receiving 11 aspects of one's eternal spiritual identity or sarup. So here he's speaking indirectly about ekadas bhav, the 11 aspects of one's eternal spiritual identity. This is a genuine process. The genuine process is that we do our nam bhajan, we, we practice chanting the holy names, and when we our heart becomes free from anartas, then one sarup manifests. As Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in Harinam Chintamani, Nami Prasvatito Harupa Guna Karma, that the holy name will blossom into Rup Guna Karma, right? our form, our qualities, and our activities in the spiritual world. Bhaktisiddhanta goes on in the letter to this uh, best of virtuous women. In many places, undiscriminating gurus artificially impose these, quote, revelations on unqualified sadhaks. <laughs> wow, that's a really packed sentence. <laughs> so some gurus are undiscriminating. They're just freely giving something when people don't have qualification for it. They are artificially impose why isn't it an art why is it an artificial imposition it's an artificial imposition because it's not naturally realized and therefore the word revelation is put in quotation marks because the sadhaks are unqualified this process cannot be considered a true depiction of surup city those who attain Surup City or realization of their eternal spiritual form and identity come to realize their eternal identity of their own accord, Swata City. Sri Gurudev merely assists them in making progress and realizing these topics on the path of bhajan. I have nothing more to say on this subject. While the Sadik progresses on the path of perfection, his heart becomes disposed towards service and free from duplicity. All these subjects naturally manifest in such a heart. And this is what my Guru Maharaj taught us about this subject matter, as I've commented in some of our previous sessions also, that uh, he said, I'm not going to tell you. He said, you have to realize this yourself. Uh, Bhaktisiddhanta, again, in another uh, article, another lecture that he gave, this is a lecture he gave the Chaitanya Math in Mayapur, on the 28th of January, 1931. Gwani Taipa, let me read his comment here. I was suggested to consider the function of the two different paths, Pancharatrika and Bhagavat, until one is not free from the tendency of offenses, the Bhagavat path is not effective. Yeah. So that's why so much we stress, and I want to speak about that. I'm afraid we may have two more sessions on this subject, but I really want to make it real clear because... I, I, and we're not just trying to have some sense gratification or whatever by going through this so deeply, but because I find it's such a deeply misunderstood subject matter by devotees, I really want to just go into this very as deeply as we can. And, and you may want to listen to these recordings again later on, go over things again. I, again, I'll share these notes to everybody today, and, and you can go over those. So this is from a lecture Srila Bhaktisiddhanta gave in Mayapur on the 28th of January, 1931. And he starts off by saying that, that some people ask me, why don't you give Siddha Pranali? He says, however, I cannot understand how a Sadak and a Siddha, Sadak means a, a practicing devotee, and a Siddha, a, a, a fully realized devotee, can be on the same level. How can one, in the stage of Sadhana that is full of anartas, cultivate the activities of sadhana that is free from anarchas or that of siddhi. If someone is siddha, self-realized, and he mercifully reveals his sarup to me, then only can I come to know his eternal constitutional form. In this world, if you study discussion 
And there's so many people who who give classes about active listening and how important that is. And they, they do uh, couple counseling and things. And if you go for counseling as a Gurhasta couple, they always tell you the most important principle is listening. It's also good practice for brahmacharis <laughs> and the ashram to listen to each other and try to understand each other. Why is that so important? It's important because we misunderstand in such a very, very gross way. I saw something a little humorous today, for a little bit of humor. I can't share with you right now, but um, if I forget, someone can can remind me. It's about a five-minute video. It's a non-devotional video, but it serves a useful purpose in that it, it uh, talks about how we shouldn't prematurely try to judge something and try, try to judge some person or something. And that's the problem and that's why I'm mentioning all this about Grihasta counseling, et cetera. We misunderstand each other. We misunderstand our husband or our wife. We misunderstand our best friend. We misunderstand our parents. And if we misunderstand them, what hope is there if I have such conditioned senses to receive something divine and, and to be able to realize that divine revelation of my, my eternal spiritual nature or for someone who's in a similar condition state to be able to give such a thing. They can't even have a proper conversation, according to psychiatrists and counselors in the world today. Such a person cannot even have a proper conversation. What to speak of giving some revelation of what our Sharup is. So repeatedly, um, Srila Bhakta Siddhanta is stressing here that uh, it's the guru who, he says, a guru doesn't give this thing. He's, we were also reading it in a previous session. But the guru assists them in realizing these topics on the path of bhajan. And some people, they, they, if they're on a very high platform in their tradition, guru gives that. I don't see any reason. One of my teachers, Professor Fakir Mohan Prabhu, he had Siddha Pranali. And he spoke to us about it sometimes, frankly. Once some one uh, Mataji, who was one of my god sisters, asked him, she said, well, I was talking to this Babaji at Radhakun, and he offered me Siddha Pranali. Should I do that? <laughs> and I, we, we all kind of got on the edge of our chair because what, what's Fakir Mohan Prabhu going to say? We weren't... At that time, we, we just started associating with him, and we didn't have complete faith in him, to be really honest. We were always nervous that he's going to try to, to defeat us or something and establish some other Babaji thing. And he said very simply, he said, it's a bona fide thing. He said, but if uh, you already have initiation into another uh, Bhajan Pranali, another system of Bhajan, like the system of Raghunath Das Goswami, the, the Antaranga Pata, the internal path of, of the holy name, if you have, you've taken initiation to that system, then stick with that. If you, he pointed out, if you take some other Bhajan Pranali, then you're doing offense to your guru. In, in, in effect, you're, you're giving it up. Where I, and I'm personally not saying that, that all the Babajis and all the persons who practice Siddha Pranali are all demons, they're all Sahajas, they're all wrong. I, I don't like that that personal, that kind of mentality. Sometimes in some places, Srila Prabhupada, in kind of a broad sweeping way, speaks like that. But the fact is that Bhaktivinoda Thakur had that, as we were just reading, Shamananda Prabhu had that. There's different acharyas in our line who have that. Uh, we're not against it. We just have our own particular system. And I want to follow what my Gurudev has given me. So there's a necessity to hear from Sadhu Guru. There's a necessity to hear about Sadhu Guru. And this is a principle which is spoken in the Bhagavatam. Let's look at this. This is Bhagavatam 3, 13, chapter 13, uh, text 4. Shutasya pumsam suchira shamasya nam anjasa suri bhiridita rita tad gunan ashrun Tad gunan ushravanan mukunda padara vindam hideyeshu yesham. I feel I'm, I'm butchering some of the Sanskrit today. Fakir Mambu sometimes used to have me 
read some of Sanskrit, and if I didn't pronounce it correctly, <laughs> I would really get chastised like anything. Anyway, he says, persons who hear from a spiritual master with great labor and for a long time must hear from the mouths of pure devotees about the character and activities of pure devotees. Pure devotees always think within their hearts of the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead who awards his devotees liberation. Prabhupada, his purple, we'll just read a little bit from the purport here. Um, Transcendental students are those who undergo great penance in being trained by hearing the Vedas from a bona fide spiritual master. Not only must they hear about the activities of the Lord, but they must also hear about the transcendental qualities of the devotees who are constantly thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord within their hearts. Worship of the devotee is more potent than worship of the Lord. It is therefore the duty of the transcendental students to hear of pure devotees as explained by similar devotees of the Lord, because one cannot explain about the Lord or his devotee unless one happens to be a pure devotee himself. Sometimes I tell this story, please forgive me if, you, if you've all heard it so many times. Uh, once I met one senior devotee, he was a very, very, one of Prabhupada's very most senior disciples, and he was speaking in a very negative way. And he was saying that, that he told me, there's no bona fide sannyasis in ISKCON. None of them are chanting 16 rounds. He says, I know. I used to be a sannyasi, and I wasn't chanting 16 rounds. <laughs> and when he said that, it, it hurt my heart a little. And I spoke up in kind of an impudent way. Please excuse me. And I said, well, uh, I, I beg to differ with you. I know at least one bona fide person in Prabhupada's mission. He says, yeah, who? And I said, you. And he literally took two steps back because he thought he was going to do some judo or something. I said, what do you mean? And I said, well, if you can say that there's no bona fide persons, it means you must be a bona fide person. As Srila Prabhupada says here, one cannot explain about the Lord or his pure devotee I'm speaking previously, unless one happens to be a pure devotee himself. So this is a very important thing. We want to hear about devotees. We want to hear about pure devotees, but we want to hear about it from pure devotees. I can tell you, you know, as we were mentioning in a previous session, that uh, there was such and such Muslim tailor who had a dream and, and he, he and, and in his dream the deity came to him and Krishna said that, that you should get your daughter married to such and such person and he went to the temple and told him I saw some book like that <laughs> I don't know if the person who wrote the book is such a pure devotee I doubt very seriously that Muslim person is such a pure devotee what is the value of that Someone may say, well, well, it gives people some inspiration and they give donations <laughs> after that. Uh, that's okay. That's good for people with low kick shraddha. But Prabhupada in his prayer report is saying that, that uh, it, we should do great penance in being trained properly. And we should hear properly from pure devotees. So my grandma, Prabhupada used to say sometimes, he said that you just repeat what you've heard. We may not be pure devotees, but if we repeat purely what we've heard and we don't speculate, and that's why I don't like stories like these things, which my grandma didn't speak in class or Prabhupada didn't speak in class. I'm very shy about those things. Uh, otherwise, I would prefer to speak Shastra. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's look at Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's Sartha Darshani commentary on this verse in Bhagavatam. Vaishnava Kata Shravanam Vina. Without hearing Vaishnava Kata Shravanam, Vaishnava Kata Shravanam, hearing topics about the Vaishnavas, Vina, without that. Huh? Then he says, Vidu Samapi Vidya Vifala, huh? that your knowledge. If, if even you may be a vidya, you may be a very, very learned person, vidya, you may be a learned person, but your vidya is vipala. It's useless. Mm -hmm. The goal of a person who's engaged in studying shastra from the mouth of guru, shrutasya, in which is long effort, suchira, shamasya, is praised by great devotees. Other goals are condemned. What is that goal? 
It is hearing and chanting of the qualities of persons in whose hearts exist the lotus feet of Krishna. Now, I'm using this as kind of an introduction to our next uh, contemplations on this subject, which is the importance of uh, hearing from Sadhu Guru about our, our taking shelter of Sadhu Guru and getting the, the mercy of Sadhu Guru. By having that, then we can understand all these things. But if we just try to speak about it in a in a in a popular way, in a public way, it doesn't work the same. Let's look again. I'll, I'll finish with this quote from Bhaktivinoda Thakur's fascinating story called Prema Pradeep. Uh, Prema Pradeep is um, it's a story about some yogis who became pure Vaishnava. It's a long story. And in Prema Pradeep, in the 10th chapter, you call different Kirans or different rays. Each chapter is called a Kiran. He speaks about how someone, this great Vaishnava, was going to speak about Radha Krishna Leela. And he says, but a Rupa, if I speak about this thing, Sabha, in, in this public assembly, then because there's people here who are Anadi Karya, Pakshe, who don't have qualification, vishesha mangala hoite pari, then, then the result may be vishesha mangala, it may be inauspicious. It can be harmful for them. And he goes on to explain that higher topics cannot be attained unless one is on a higher platform. Just like higher knowledge gradually arises in all scientific literature, likewise confidential truths are attained in devotional literatures by proper qualification. Uchadi kata krame, uchadi, it arises in a natural way that qualification will come to us. So we should be, we should practice what Rupa Goswami describes in Upadeshamrita, utsahanis dharyat, we should be patient uh, and enthusiastic and confident that what that this is going to happen and I'm going to get this thing, but it requires some patience. And as we've uh, commented in some previous sessions from uh, friends of mine who are living at Radhakund and, and staying there for many, many years, Iskand devotee friends, there's scandals there also. There's also Babaji's there who have Siddha Pranali. And I'm not trying to say that that all of them are bad and we're all good because we also have our scandals <laughs> in our line also. But the the fact is that for someone to realize their sarup is a very, very rare thing. One of my uh, friends, one of my god uncles, who's a proper disciple, uh, he has a number of disciples and he initiated one of them and later she left him and went to Radha Kun and took Siddha Pranali. And later on, uh, she came to see him again. In fact, it's been many, many years since she left, and she still has some respect and, 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 and uh, veneration for her Gurma, for her first guru, even though she left him. And when he comes to India and Vrindavan, she goes to visit him. And once he asked her, that they were just sitting, there's just two or three of them, just in a very quiet way, and he asked her, so? Have you realized your sarup? And she kind of hung her head down and she said, no. So I, I'm not trying to suggest that that means that everybody at Radha Kun haven't realized their sarup. But from what I've observed, what it, by their, their external qualities of the modes of nature, by their behavior, from what I've heard from persons who are at Radha Kun, who have closely studied the behavior of different persons, it's a very rare thing. It has happened in ISKCON, uh, and we could give different examples. But I, again, I don't like to speak about different persons. I don't like to speak about miracles. If I speak about different persons, someone may say, but I, that person, I, I heard about them when they were a new bhakta, and, and they they purchased a chocolate bar at, at Little's Market once, and, and they ate it without offering it or something. They can't be a pure devotee. So I, I therefore we, we're discouraged from speaking about particular persons in general. But we do have examples of devotees who seem to be exhibiting asasatvikara bhav, different ecstatic symptoms, 
uh, especially before they left this world, devotees who uh, seemed to realize this Rup and spoke about it in a very, very convincing, understanding way. We also have that in our line, in, in our ISKCON line, and also in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, there's different examples too. I'll just, just mention that such a thing exists. I, I, what, what value those things are, are they all completely authorized descriptions? I can't say, but uh, this is in our line also. So let's look at the verse again. Whew. And we took three steps backward to make one step forward today. So this is uh, the verse we're reading from Prem Bhakti Chandraka from chapter 5, Raghunuga Bhakti Riti, a glimpse in the path of Raghunuga Bhakti. Yugala charana sevi nirantara e bhavi anuragi taki basurai sadhane bhavi bhajaha siddhadehe pabhataha raga patara e se upai. I will constantly desire to serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna with loving attachment. Whatever I contemplate during the practice of devotional service will certainly be achieved upon perfection in a spiritual body. This is a method on the path of attachment. So uh, we haven't talked about it on this verse yet. Maybe I'll, I will do it in another session. But whatever I'm contemplating during the practice of devotional service it will be achieved. So we should be very careful what we're thinking about while we're doing our sadhana. And what what is a, a solution for that? Uh, my suggestion is, it's also the suggestion of Shiva Ram Maharaj and other Vaishnavas, that uh, we uh, begin, before we, we do our bhajan, we, uh, I'm just trying to share something here that's going on. That we have some meditation, we offer some prayers before we begin. So let's just transfer something from my phone to my computer. These are some prayers that I, re I recite every day, which didn't come to me. Oh, now they should come, yeah. So let's bring these up on the computer. These are some uh, prayers of one grand disciple, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, who is not in Iskan, he's in Gaudiya Mat, but he's a very famous devotee, very wonderful Vaishnava. And he prays this every day, and he recommends these prayers to be done every day. I, I've been doing these every day. It's not that one has to do a particular prayer, but we should have some prayers. And the point is that from this verse of, of the Narottam Das Thakur, that we have some prayers, something we're feeling in our heart before we, we do our Nam Bhajan, then that, that stays in our mind. And we get that thing. So he's praying, Ananta Kodi Vaishnav Jan, Ananta Kodi Bhakta Jan, Ananta Kodi is a mistake, there should be Ananta Anata, Ananta Kodi Rasika Jana Tata, Ananta Kodi Mere Guru Jana. He's saying that all the unlimited Vaishnavas, all the unlimited devotees, all the unlimited Rasik devotees, all my unlimited gurus, birth after birth, what am I? Charanamki Dulakana. I'm just a, a little bit of dust at your lotus feet. So please give me mujuko lelo apanisani, give me your shelter, mere mana ki hatta do patakan. And when you give me your shelter, uh, uh, you stop the restless wanderings of my mind. And then he goes on to pray that lagodo mujuko krishna charan, lagodo mujuko gora charan, that you engage in, because this is what sadhu does. Sadhu, Guru, the Vaishnavas, they engage us in, in, the, in the service of the lotus feet of Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he says that, that uh, if I've committed any offenses at your lotus feet, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, or in some previous lifetime, he says, um, or in this one, please forgive me. I, I'm surrendered to you. <laughs> and he says, I, I like this so much. Papi hun, aparadi hun, kota hun, jakara hun, acha hun, jabroda hun, jaisi bi hun, mind to apake hun. He said that I may be a papi, I may be a sinner, I may be an aparadi, an offender, I may be kota, I may be bogus, I may be kara, I may be genuine, acha or buddha, I may be good, I may be bad, <laughs> however I am. 
you should look at me with your kripa drishti. You should give me your merciful glance upon me and, and look at me in a kind way. He meri pranadana, because you're the treasure of my heart. You're my everything. Nibbalo abato apanapana. You should count me that I belong to you. Mine hun apake charanasan, I'm taking shelter at your lotus feet. Hey mere janma janma, ke guru jana. You're my master's birth after birth. And the author of this <clears throat> describes that if one utters these prayers every day before chanting Harinam, he will certainly develop taste for Harinam and also receive the mercy of innumerable Vaishnavas. And this is an introduction to our next session that this is how we, our path, our process is to chant the holy name, but not just chanting the holy name. Chanting the holy name is service to guru. And chanting the holy name with the mood of turn out a peace in it, chena. And if we chant in that way, in a very, very humble way, then we'll get a taste for the holy name and we'll receive the mercy of the Vaishnavas because these two things are, uh, you can't separate the two of them. Can everybody hear me okay? I take it you can. Nobody. Okay. I didn't use my normal mic or my normal camera today. I was a little late, so I forgot about that. So let's go ahead and stop there. Um, it, it, raise your hand. Is, would anybody like these prayers that I just recited? Okay. So um, Subal Sakaprabhu, are you in our WhatsApp group? Our Pray Prashna WhatsApp group? No, and I wanted to ask your permission to join. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have to do that. And Krishna Kohn, don't let me forget. I'm very forgetful. Um, so I'll, I'll post those in our WhatsApp group, but first of all, I'll add Subal Saka Prabhu there. Okay. So very, very nice person. Actually, I posted them some time back, but I didn't really say anything about them. These are uh, written by Aniruddha Prabhu, who chants three lakhs a day. He's a grihasta. He was working a job as an engineer for the government and chanting over one lakh a day for like 50 years. And then he retired and started chanting three lakhs a day. And he's a very, very amazing Vaishnava. Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj sometimes goes to visit him and other personalities. He's a great personality. Anyway, he wrote a nice book about the holy name, and this is his introduction to it. So a lot of things today. I, I don't know, it, you know, it's not necessary that everybody has some digestion of them. But as we like to comment you should know such a thing exists. <laughs> so I, I, my purpose will be served if uh, the devotees just get some faith that, wow, yeah, this is bona fide, <laughs> what we're doing. And we don't have to have the Siddha Pranali thing. We should just chant the holy name. I want to, in a, maybe not the next session, maybe the session after that, speak something more about how to become Siddha, through the chanting of the holy name, and why we don't see that, it's, it's, it's also a very important part of this discussion, I think. So anyway, anybody has any reflections, comments, questions, protests? I said something wrong. Gorni Taipa, were you not angry with me? Yes, sir. I have one reflection, if you allow. Sure. Okay, and, and then, then I'll show you. I just read today very nice example, a very nice picture of how, how we understand the true function of the Pancharatriki and the Bhagavad Bhav. So devotees used to uh, want to go to a food or some, somewhere, you know, to go to pilgrimage, and they can choose two days, two ways. One is walking, another is getting a rickshaw. So earlier, you know, we have a person who drives a rickshaw. And uh, the, the example is telling you that if you have a good, strong rickshaw driver, that you can very quickly to your goal, like uh, this uh, perfection. So the rickshaw driver is like a Bhagavad path. But if you don't have a comfortable seat with two wheels, uh, where you can sit nicely, then the strong rickshaw driver will just, you know, pull you on the road or somewhere. So it's very difficult. So both is important, but the driver is the Bhagavad part. But the place 
how you do that, how you comfortably follow them, that is the point charity uh, path. So that's what I would like to offer. Nice. And you have to have a proper driver too, who knows where you want to go <laughs> and has a proper vehicle, doesn't have a flat tire. <laughs> That's a really beautiful example. Thank you very much, Shoji. Or Salia, do you want to you want to comment something? Yes, thank you very much. Uh I just I would like to uh, to say thank you that it was so inspiring both the last and this session actually every every sessions but uh, however you mentioned that uh, that uh, talking about the uh, holy name is uh, something very basic but it was really so important and i feel that it is important and uh, any of my misunderstanding or was gone <laughs> um, and uh, I feel that I am supported to just uh, take service and uh, uh, do the um, um, bhajan and uh, and that's all and everything in the uh, in due time will be appeared and that's all I have to I do not have to make more efforts and you know like struggling in this issue it's just uh, take it easy of course <laughs> in I, I I mean it in the right way good you're the professor you don't know she's a professor at the university in Debrecen she teaches there I I find a lot of times in teaching both my parents were teachers in the university in uh, there's a principle sometimes some people and honestly I, I don't mean to be disparaging or negative but I think they're people who mostly are not very good teachers and they don't really know the subject matter so well themselves sometimes they think oh we, we have to just treat everyone like babies and 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 tell people you can't understand this and just te te speak to them in the simplest like childlike way but I find there has to be some encouragement. And if you just speak in a very, very simplistic way, then people sometimes, they don't have faith. So actually, this path of the holy name of Nam Bhajan, as we're going to show more in the next couple of sessions too, is very, very deep. It's very, very esoteric. And maybe, maybe most devotees don't choose to speak about it, and someone may find fault with me for speaking about it in this way. But I don't. I'm doing it in the spirit, not that I think that that I'm qualified to speak on it, or that everyone here is qualified to hear. But in the spirit that if we speak about this thing, it will give us faith. That we'll understand. Oh my God, there, there's something to it. Instead of just saying you should chant Hare Krishna, and devotees say, people ask, why should we chant Hare Krishna? I, I saw a discussion today, and someone said, because you'll be peaceful, you'll become happy, you'll understand the goal of life, and I, <laughs> and I thought, man, the hell with that, <laughs> or just become happy. This is, what does Shastra say? Our, our acharyas don't speak like that. We're just watering. We're not speaking according to our tradition. But when people come to us, they'd like to know, what is your tradition? Well, this is what our acharyas say. And yes, this is very deep. It's very technical. But we, we would try to explain it in a way you can understand it. It's important. I, I think that's a very important principle for teaching. I'm just thinking of teaching when I see you. Any <laughs> question? Okay. Anybody else with anything you'd like to share? Leela Purushottam Prabhu has got some comments here. Do you want to you want to uh, make your comments verbally? You said a Hari Prabhu yeah, here. Well, well, Go ahead. Happy Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, it was just a sh short, quick thing on on uh, Ushva Mataji's uh, I, I I really like how you put it that that actually this internal part is like uh, uh, very deep and esoteric and we shouldn't uh, look at it that is just a simplified version of bhakti for, for the neophytes or something like that. Or we should rather learn to appreciate its depth and profoundness and, and 
No, God. No. You There's know, a I... lot to cover within the Nam Tatwa and then within the realization that the Nam Bajan carry with itself. I, I, I have been living in India for over 10 years without leaving and giving talks, but only giving talks pretty much to devotees. And then one year we, we left India and we went to one city, big city, and they were having a Rathiatra. And the devotees asked me to speak for 45 minutes. You've heard me tell this story before, but it really gave me a deep realization. And, and I was watching because all the other entertainment things on the stage are like 10 minutes or five minutes. And they gave me 45 minutes. And I'm looking at the audience and there are people with beers in their hands and cigarettes, hamburgers, their arms around what clearly were not their wives. And <laughs> 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 some money. And I'm thinking, what can I tell these people? And when I got on the stage, I did not speak down to them. Whereas one of the previous speakers on the stage told them, he said bluntly, he said, you can't understand this. This is very high. You can't understand it. So instead of speaking, and I saw they just started leaving. <laughs> Practically as soon as the speaker told, said that. When I got on the stage, I immediately, the first thing I did was offer respect to them as being very cultured and educated people with a very artistic background, which in that particular city, there's some background of art and things. And I, I said, I'd like to, to tell you something very artistic and philosophical. And I spoke about it in that way. And for 45 minutes, nobody left. And I don't know, I can't tell you for sure if anybody in that audience really got any benefit or not. I, I, I don't know. But I, I've got, got <laughs> I, I got benefit. I walked away from there and, and I realized, wow, there's no reason for me to dumb down Krishna consciousness, even for a group of people eating hamburgers and smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol with prostitutes coming out of a gambling casino, which is what they were. I, there's no reason to dumb it down and try to present it in a way. For, let me just be in my culture, but try to talk to them in a respectful way to listen. And, and it, it's always worked for me since. And I, I don't we don't exactly always speak about these kind of things. We don't talk about Siddha Pranali at the Sunday Feast program. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we can discuss Nam Tattva. We can discuss uh, that. that also. <laughs> okay, I, I wanted to, uh, like one thing what came to my mind, I was really happy. I mean, you, you mentioned it because you know me <laughs> so well. <laughs> I was happy for you putting in the the Seva Sada Karupana Sudharupana Chatra here. <laughs> and really, uh, if I contemplate the, 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 the topic, see, it really seems that that a serious switch ha switch uh, happened historically. Because what is the trouble with that verse is to interpret the Sada Karupa and, and Siddharupa properly, that, that even has the historical context uh, where there was this dispute between Rupa Kaviraj and Vishwana Chakravarti ended up actually at the court of, of Jaipur. <laughs> and and the, the, the problem was that they had a different opinion on what is Sadha Karupa. Like Vishwana Chakravarti's version was that Sadha Karupa is in a sense, just the material body, the, the body in which you, you, you perform sadhana. And the Rupa Kaviraja's version was that only when you, uh, when you perform sadhana, then it's sadhaka rupa. And then they were quite clear, both of them, ag agreeable on what is siddha rupa. And the pranali of what, what they suggested differed on, on, on that first part. But it, now it seems actually that the whole thing shifted and that the, what was usually commonly agreed on what is Siddha Rupa is now presented as a, as a Sadha Karupa, that, that, that you has, you have artific, you will artificially achieve all the revelations prematurely, way too prematurely. And, uh, 
behave as a sadhaka with the with the siddha realizations actually which makes the whole thing re really weird not like not not really functioning properly so that was one thing and connected to it when i was like thinking a little farther i would really love to hear some elaboration on how would we bring into connection these these terms like seva uh, seva seva krupa uh, sadhana rupa and and uh, siddha rupa with the terms mantra mai upasanam and and varasiki upasanam it might be just my <laughs> I'm, I'm over thoughtful but it seems that there could be some clue to it because the it sounds like that ashtakali alila smaran bhajan what if if we would claim so if we would say that that proposed sadhana of of the babaji line rather it sounds to me rather like being much closer to swarasiki upasanam which on the other hand we have much more uh closer connected with with the uh, with siddha with with perfection it's not really it's not really like the, the I, but i'm not clear on these terms like i i went through them when you when you uh, let uh, let me know where to read about them in bhakti sandarbha so i went through that text but it's it, it for me it would require much more information on, on how to grasp these two terms well, like mantra mayupasana and then swarasikasana to really see the, the 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 context of of how is it projected into into the devotees practices because that could be in, in we lost to some Okay, you're back. Um, yeah, because in that shallow understanding that I have, it could be a little clue to understand, like this seva sadha, sadha karupa and and siddha rupa. Meaning, if we would somehow manage to associate it with with mantra mai upasana mena and swarasiki upasana, but it might be I, I don't claim it. it it's just. I, I want to think about it. Some send me. I just. It's a good question. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, sometimes good questions are better than than good answers, even <laughs> because they make us think. <laughs> Please type that in and send it to me. Otherwise, I, I I'm I'm forgetful. I'll, I'll okay. forget it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, there's some a bunch of comments. I want to go to Siddha Hari Prabhu, but uh, just a second. Um, Krishna Kuhn, do you want to verbally say something here? She just wrote a bunch of comments here. No, not I really didn't plan on verbally saying anything. That's why I wrote to you personally. Never mind. Um, I uh, oh, and to me personally. It's okay. Maybe it's not important enough. Uh, maybe just go to Siddha Hari Prabhu's question. Okay, Siddha Hari Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you. Uh, once again, Prabhu, for working so hard to present to us this very difficult topic, and I really appreciate it. Um, although most of what you speak, uh, it seemed a little bit to me irrelevant at this point in my sadhana, because I'm not uh, so much, what do you call, I've not dealt with or have faced such uh, practitioners yet in my life, so I have not developed such doubts about my practice. In most, of the, most of the time, I have stayed in an environment where the focus is on the holy name. So at this point of time, it seems... Uh, you know, all this, uh, this talk about Siddha Pranali seems uh, quite foreign to me. But one question which I have is, is regarding Bhakti Mnath Thakur's initiation, Shilohtan Thakur's initiation, because we, you said that he also received uh, Siddha Pranali Diksha from his Guru Maharaj, Bipin Bihari Goswami, Goswamiji. And if he received that, does it, does it mean that Bipin Bihari Goswami saw his perfect form as Kamala Manjari and revealed to him that you are Kamala Manjari in the spiritual world? I'm just trying to understand how does this Siddha Pranali work? Like, does the spiritual master go and tell the future what a person is going to become? It seems very odd because I thought that it's yeah. something which should develop along the path. It's a very good question. 
see one problem is with these these topics just to be very straightforward is that these are historical topics we can't go and talk to Bhaktivinoda talk where there's no videos from those times there's nobody who are taking notes and things and there's different historical descriptions given in different places um let's put that down just as a note now let's go to another point i i've spoke to some senior persons at radha Kun, and i've heard that some of the older babajis there who are like 80 90 years old they've said very strongly that 50 years ago 60 70 years ago the system of siddha pranali that was going on is not the same way it is today that basically, from what I've understood, that pretty much everyone does the same thing. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Vashanam, Sakyamat, Manivedam. We, we practice Navavidhi Bhakti, we practice Panchanga Bhakti, as given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, five primary practices, Nam Kirtan, Bhagavat, Shravan, Sadhu, Sangha, like that. Those are Everyone does that. That's their primary thing. Now, some people have Siddha Pranali, some people give Siddha Pranali, but 50, 60, 70 years ago, the way that was given was not the way it is today. The only persons that, that, that they very rarely gave it, according to some of these very senior old Babajis, that out of maybe 100 people who are coming to Radha Kun and staying at Radha Kun, maybe two of them might get such a thing. Not, not 80 or 90 of them like it is today. And only those persons who had been chanting like one lakh or two lakhs a day or more for many years and shown themselves to be very, very serious. And now I'm talking about external material qualifications, but they had those external material qualifications, then they might give that to them. The purpose of me speaking about all these things, first of all, to you, 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 it had some doubt about that, perhaps, is to encourage us to have faith in our process. And what Srila Prabhupada gave us, that this is a process of Raghunath Das Goswami. This is, this is a respected process amongst all good Vaishnavas. There are, honestly, some uptight, immature, childlike uh, devotees who were angry and they left Iskand and they got Siddha Pranali and now they're on a war path and they want to try to go and break everybody's faith and spit in your face and tell you your guru is not bona fide. And <laughs> they're not very pleasant usually. <laughs> I've met a few such persons. But I've also, doing research, I had the, 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 the honor to meet, I've had the great honor to meet a few of Mahant's such as Ananta Das Pandit at Radha Kund. I met him a couple times to ask some questions about history and things at Radha Kund, not to put my head there. Uh, and he, and then he, his, his mood was very gentle. He never tried to break my faith or speak in an angry way or crazy way or anything. And I respect that. So that that's some points to understand. Now, going back to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and Bipin Bihari Goswami, I wanted to preface any comments I make about him with my uh, what I said about the elderly Babajis at Radha Kun and how they're saying that that Siddha Pranali is not what it, today what it used to be, and, and it used to be only given to very rare, very qualified persons, but today it's very cheaply given. So again, this is an historical principle. Uh, we know that he got. Siddha Pranali, we know that in the line of Bipin Bihari Goswami, they gave Ekadas Bhav as initiation, but it's not, I, I, I would be very uncomfortable and think it incorrect to equate them with the, the, the kind of activity that's going on today at Radha Kund. Because Bipin Bihari Goswami had very few disciples. Our Fakir Mohan Prabhu got Siddha Pranali from Kanupriya Goswami and Navadweep, who's totally into the holy name, wrote like five books just about the holy name. And Kanupriya Goswami had something, I think he had four disciples. And Fakir Mamba was the only one who, who was not a brahmachari. He was going to the, the university, he was a professor and things. So it, was, it, was, it wasn't something they gave very freely. We know that. And, and, and what level, the, the point Srila Bhaktisiddhanta and Bhaktivinoda Thakur are making repeatedly is that 
there should be qualified persons who give this thing. Now, how it's given, that's another thing. What we say they, they they it's a they say it's a siddha pranali. It's a pranali, it's a river or flow of different Siddha Mahatmas. And they you know your Sarup and your Guru's Sarup and your Param Guru and your Prapara Guru and like that. But we say basically the same thing. Only Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says that it's not that the Guru is going to bring you in one day and sit you down and say, Siddha Hari Prabhu, you are Bhuta Manjari. <laughs> you are this or that. <laughs> and your color is black. And <laughs> it's not that that's going to happen with it, but he's going to help you through the process of chanting the holy names to realize it. And interestingly, from what I know of the current day Babaji's at Radhakun today, and I'm just trying to speak in a very broad-minded, open way about this tradition in our line. From what I know about today's current practice at Radhakun and other places, it's not so fixed. It's not that, that, that the guru just brings you in and says, you are such and such manjur, you are this and this. Maybe some of that goes on. But more likely, they, the, the disciple sits down even today, although it's much more cheap today than it used to be, but even today when things are cheaper, the disciple will sit down and say, Guru Maharaj, I really like Krishna's pastimes at the end of the day, or I like his pastimes in the middle of the day. I like his pastimes w with Vishaka, or I'm attracted with this particular pastime. And the disciples speak like that, and they work it out together. Now, it, it still may just be some imagination in their mind. It's not something which is divinely realized. But even today, this is how it's given, it, that, that it's something they work out together. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says something a little similar. He says that the guru doesn't give it, but the guru helps the disciple. And, and, and how does a guru help the disciple? The disciple goes to Guru Maharaj and says, as we were just reading from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he has some revelation or something. I, I saw this, I saw that. I had this, this feeling when I, I saw this drama of, about uh, Mother Yashoda's pastimes with Krishna, and I was so attracted by that particular mood. And I just want to tell you, and you don't tell that to everybody. You just tell that to your guru, and then your guru will tell you, your guru or the Vaishnavas will tell you, yeah, I think you had too many chilies last night before you took rest and you had that dream, or, or you, you should be more serious about things, or maybe you should read something in Krishna Bhavan Amrita about Mother Yashoda every day. You should, depending, depending on your character and the depth of your sincerity as understood through Guru, through the Sadhu, they'll help us and guide us in that way. And that was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's uh, recommendation. That was his, his, the process. That's not that the Guru is going to sit you down and say, here's these 11 things, write it down, this is what you are. But rather, through the, through the process of nambhaja and through the process of divine revelation, pratyak savagamam dharmyam, we realize this thing, and Guru helps in that way. Is that helpful, Prabhuji? It's a great question. Yes, yes dear Prabhu. Thank, thank, thank you, dear Prabhu. I appreciate it. Where are you sitting right now? I, I'm noticing the door and things. that You, you and... Uh, uh, I mean, maybe Michigan. Maybe. Achha. Looks like an old yeah. building or something. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much uh -huh. for that. Uh -huh. I really appreciate that. Hare Krishna. Hare really. Krishna. There's some new comments here, too. Lila Purushottam, could we ask for those quotes by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta? Yes. Again, remind me if I forget. I've got, I have so many things going on. I'm trying to do it. It's just I, I forget my name sometimes. Okay. Anybody else with any reflections or anything you want to share? Subhal Saka Prabhu, you always have wonderful comments and things. Do you want to share anything? Hare Krishna. First of all, I wanted to thank you and all the devotees for this wonderful atmosphere that created this Katha. And um, uh, the whole this series of Katha reminded me uh, the uh, so strategy of how Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita. Yes, mm. he uh, describes um, all the types of yoga, all the different systems, and uh, deeply, uh, 
and then he goes to the Siddhanta, right? It's, you, should, you should follow this type of yoga, bhakti yoga. And uh, also uh, the way uh, Shiradaya Pranaya Mahima is presented in Vrihat Bhagavatam Ritam, where Narada Muni and Gopakumar, they go step by step through different stages of consciousness or devotional service. And uh, through that gradual process, when we come to uh, this type uh, of bhakti, which is uh, praised as Mahima, then we can really appreciate, oh, this is so unique. And the same way when you speak and describe uh, the different systems of bhajan, of uh, Vaishnavas, and um, again and again make the conclusion that this holy name, the process that we have got, this uh, Nam Bhajan Mahima, is so unique, so deep, and uh, really uh, but uh, listening and they, again and again about those descriptions, you come to understand. In comparison, mm -hmm. like in all the different these uh, systems of yoga in Gita and stages of devotional service in the Hat Bhagavatam Rita, how unique is our Bhajan Pranali, Snam Bhajan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. That, that's that's the treasure of our life. And that's why we want to associate with devotees. And that's why we often, I, I, I saw just recently in an article about the, the Brahma Gayatri Mantra. Excellent, excellent article. If anybody wants, ask me for that. I'll be happy to send it to you. It's really excellent. If you want to read something about our tradition, about Raghunuga Bhakti, about Vanashram Dharma, and it's kind of, it's really good. There's a little bit of ISKCON politics also in there, like some salt, which <laughs> makes it interesting for everybody. But um, they uh, just they, they make such a nice presentation in such a consecutive way. I I forgot. Uh, yeah, the SAC paper. Let me put a shot. I got distracted from what I was going to say to you. Thank you very much. I, I was just appreciating how in association with devotees. We can relish these things, but it has to be like-minded association. Sometimes devotees, they, they become angry and they say, oh, I went to the temple. I got initiated. Iskand's all bogus. I got a cheater. They stole money from me, this or that. But <laughs> you're equating the process. The process is one thing. And your personal experience and, and social experience is another thing. We have to be able to separate the two. We should have firm faith in the process in our previous acharyas. And it's so important in our own lives to come together with like-minded association and, and here together. So important. Thank you again, Subhasaka Prabhu. I'm going to add you to our thing here now. Okay, anybody else want to share anything? Okay, so we'll go ahead and, and stop there. Um, Lula Purushottam, yes, the sack paper. You've got that one, right? Right, Lula Purushottam, Prabhu? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's really brilliant. It's amazing. I want, one thing I really appreciated so much about that paper, Peck, it made me want to cry, is the fact that they spoke to so many different Vaishnavas from Goswami Paribars, from Babaji Paribars, from Gaudiya Mat, from this and that. It was very, very broad-minded. And and what is your conception of the Brahma Gayatri Mantra and how is it given and, and like that? And it was really, really good. Um, Siddha, uh, 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 Lila Prashatam, do you know when that paper came out? I don't know, it what? might be two years old or something like that. It's yeah, not it's old, kind of old. Bit, yeah. not old. Quite actual, still to the discussion on the topic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Thank you all so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki, Samabeda Bhakta Bin Ki, Gopremanandi Hari Hari Bo, 
Vancha Kalpa Dhrivishcha Kripa Sindhu Bhiva Chapatita Nampavani Bhiva Vaishna Bhiva Namona Maha Nandakori 